Hello everyone and welcome back to our series on economic survey 2021-2022. So this is our lecture number second. So in this lecture we are going to learn the details related to the developments in the Indian economy in the field of prices and inflation. It's a very very important topic. Why? Because it affects you and I on everyday basis, right? So here we are, uh, as usual, whenever we do a topic, the first thing that we do is, is look at the chapter plan about how we are going to cover the topic. So this price and inflation, we have divided into four different parts. So the first part of this topic, which we are going to discuss is related to general inflation trend. Now general inflation trend globally as well as in India. Fine. So these are the two things we are going to discuss first. This will be absolute generic in nature. Nothing, nothing very technical about it. Now, before we get into the technicalities of, of why inflation has been a big problem for the world and for Indian economy in the last one and one half years, we must understand and brush up our basic concepts related to inflation. So here in, in this discussion video, before we get into the technicalities, we would first brush up our basic concepts related to wholesale price index and consumer price index. Once we have brushed our concepts, basic idea, then we would look into what has been the major factor which has led to increase in wholesale price index in India. Similarly, we would also examine what are those factors which have led to increase in consumer price index in India. But we would do it only after learning the basics of wholesale price index and consumer price index. Once we have identified those factors that okay, because of these reasons inflation is rising in India, then we are going to look at some of the steps that has already been taken by government of India and some of the steps that could be taken by government of India so that we can keep inflation under control. Fine. So this is that area where we will discuss the solutions which has already been implemented and some potential future solutions. In the third part of, of this lecture, we are going to look at two very important things and this is one of the favorite areas of UPSC. So, so here we are look at here we are going to look at divergence. Divergence means that you know if you go and check the prices in rural area and urban area, you would see a lot of differences. We must examine why prices are rising in, in rural and urban area and why there is a difference in the rise in price in rural as well as urban area. So the price rise in rural area is different from price rise in urban area. There is, there is a difference in the inflation. We must examine why. Fine. Similarly, guys, if you look at wholesale price index, remember I told you that we are going to look at wholesale price index. And if you look at the consumer price index, you will see that wholesale price index and consumer price index are behaving differently. Now my question is, it's a very simple logical question that if wholesale price index measures inflation in the Indian economy, consumer price index measures inflation in the Indian economy, they should move in the same direction. Why is it happening in the Indian economy that one price index is moving in different direction? So WPI is moving in different direction, consumer price index is moving in different direction. Why? Why is there a gap between these two? Why these two are not running parallelly and why these two you know, are not running in a way that they should look almost equal? Why is there a difference? So that we are going to examine in this section. And the last section that we would examine in today's lecture is, is uh, is a very interesting thing because these two things have prominently been there in the news because of COVID. So we are going to look at the house prices. So what is the price of real estate, housing, right? So we are going to examine it pre-COVID and post-COVID. What has been the change in the price in real estates? We are also going to look at some of the policies by government of India in the field of pharmaceuticals, which means medicine, medical equipments, and we are going to see if the prices have increased in the field of, uh, you know, medicine and medical equipment and what has government of India done to control it. Fine. These are the things we are going to do in the miscellaneous section. So as this is your uh, chapter plan, which we are going to execute in today's lecture. 
So before we, we start the analysis of, of this chapter from economic survey, I would like to help you to understand some very basic things. I know you must be knowing it, but still there is no harm in, in brushing the basics. So see, if somebody asks you to, to name two most common types of inflation, or two most common causes of inflation, right? So what are we going to say? So if you observe around you, there are two things that lead to inflation. Number one is demand pull inflation and number two is cost push inflation. What is demand pull inflation? So see, I have an example for you. So, so suppose guys, that's you and these are your friends. Now suppose I am the government of India. I start to give you a lot of cash. I start to transfer a lot of money in your account through subsidy, through income transfer, so whatever method. Or suppose you are working somewhere in a factory, in an industry, and all of a sudden your salary increases, your salary jumps. So it doesn't happen in normal life. But suppose your salary jumps by three times, four times, five times, and, and your hand is filled with cash. The moment all of us have cash, what are we going to do? The first thing we are going to do is we are going to demand a lot of things which is our favorite. For example, suppose that all, all of us, you, me, our friends, everybody loves mobile phones, right? The moment we will have cash, the first thing we will do is we'll go to market and we'll say, let us buy our favorite mobile phone. So that's your favorite mobile phone. Now, we all know, and it's a very logical thing, that supply in an economy doesn't increase abruptly. And supply doesn't increase overnight. Because factories and manufacturing units, they take time to produce something, right? But demand can increase abruptly. If somebody gives me money, I'll start demanding a lot of things, goods and services. So the moment everybody in the economy, in general, everybody gets a lot of cash, the supply of, of goods and services are limited at a point of time. Supply takes time to increase. But if everybody becomes cash rich, what will happen? We will ask for a lot of, lot of mobile phones, but they are limited in number, so their prices will go up. This is AD. AD means aggregate demand. Aggregate demand is the demand generated in the entire economy. So if everybody becomes cash rich, aggregate demand will increase in the economy, but supply cannot be matched with demand in short run. So what will happen? Prices will go up. Everybody wants to buy this mobile phone, but the number of mobile phones is limited. So this is called as demand pull inflation. When, because of some reasons, the demand in the economy is very, very high compared to supply. It leads to increase in price called as demand pull inflation. All right. Now let's look at the cost push inflation. This is an interesting thing. Huh? So see what is happening here. Guys, to manufacture this mobile phone, what are the things that we need, all of us? If, if we want to manufacture this mobile phone, if we have a factory, we need some raw materials to manufacture the mobile phone. Number one, we need, we need the screen of the mobile phone. It's a very special thing. Screen is very costly part of mobile. So we need a screen. We need a body of the mobile phone, a plastic body, a fiber body, a metal body, right? So we need body of the mobile phone, the structure, hardware. Then we need a software. We also need the motherboard, the circuit, right? Then we need keyboard and we need workers also. So skilled workers, semi-skilled workers, so, right? So we need all these things in the, you know, manufacture of this mobile phone. Now, suppose the wages of the worker is increasing. Suppose engineers are working in this factory, their salary increases. They are demanding more salary. The price of, of body of the mobile phone increases, fiber body or metallic body, their price goes up. The price of screen goes up. The price of motherboard, software, keypad, everything, all the input prices, suppose it goes up. When the price of input goes up, what will happen? The price of Output will go up because cost of production will increase. If the price of all these inputs go up, then the cost of production will increase. It will cost me more to manufacture this mobile phone. Hence, its price will increase. Now, this type of inflation is called as cost push inflation because input prices have increased, which have increased the cost of production, which has finally increased the prices in the economy. So, there are two basic types of factors which lead to inflation. First is demand pull factor and second is cost push factor. Anything which increases demand in the economy you know, in a very aggressive manner, it will lead to demand pull inflation. Anything which leads to increase in cost of production will lead to cost push inflation. Right. So if I distribute a lot of cash to everybody in the society and the economy, 
abruptly if I start to increase you know distribution of cash what will happen inflationary tendencies fine if the oil prices increases in the economy price of petrol diesel all these things increase what will happen transportation will become costly right so what will happen cost of production will go up and inflation will happen right so now guys we are going to look at the general trend of, of global inflation as well as Indian inflation. Let's see. So we are, we are going to discuss inflation in two heads. It's a very generic thing, global and Indian. So this is your global inflation. So let's see what is happening in the global inflation. This side, this Y axis is global inflation. This X axis is time, right? So let's see. Look at this, the, the dotted line. This dotted line shows the inflation in advanced economies. Advanced economies would be developed countries like USA, UK, right? All these are developed countries. So we are going to look at the inflation in advanced economies through this dotted line. Look at the pattern. So this is how inflation has gone. Then, it, So it was high, then it came down, it went up. So in, in the year 2020, right, it was 0.7%. This was when the COVID started. But over the period of time, see what has happened in the developed countries. Inflation has skyrocketed. It has gone up very, very steeply at 3.1%. This is how inflation has increased in the developed countries. Now, let's look at the nature of inflation in developing countries like India, China, Brazil, etc. See, inflation, first of all, started from here, increased, then flattened. Now, from 2020 onwards, see what has happened. All of a sudden, spiked. And it went to average inflation in emerging market economies. Emerging market economies meaning developing countries. It's almost 5.7% on average. And what is the average inflation in advanced economies? Developed countries 3.1% on average. So what do you see? So you see from this graph that the inflation in developing economies are always higher than developed economies because things are generally costly in developing economies, right? Cost of production is high because they don't have good technology. Inputs are costly. They buy a lot of things from outside. So now cost of production is generally very high in developing countries. There is something which UPSC might ask you from here. You see, <clears throat> what has happened from here is that all of so, so here you see they are behaving in the same manner. They have flattened something like this. But when you come here around 2020, see something is happening. When you come around 2020, the gap between the developing and developed countries is huge. This is the gap. But as we are moving forward, 2020 onwards, when you reach 2021, you see that the gap between the inflation of developing and developing and developed countries is reducing, which means the price rise in developed countries is also very high because of which the price level in developed countries is, is almost very close to price level of developing countries. They are, they are behaving very closely now, right? UPSC can ask you this. So, so what can UPSC ask you? UPSC can ask you that, you know, the, the inflation level in developing countries is generally higher than developed countries. Yes. The gap between developed and developing countries in inflation in the recent years has reduced. Yes. Fine. So these are the two things. Now, why do we see that globally inflation is rising? What are the causes, general causes, because of which the inflation level in both developing and developed countries are increasing very fast? Look at this. A few minutes back, I told you that there are two important factors which lead to inflation, demand pull and cost push. Whenever something happens because of which the availability of cash increases in the economy. It leads to demand pool inflation. So see what has happened after COVID. Governments in many countries across the world have started to give cash to people, subsidy to people, right? So because of that, see, economic activities have revived. Governments are spending on stimulus package, giving cash and, and benefits to people because of which demand pool inflation is happening. Similarly, guys, during COVID, when there was lockdown, if I wanted to buy a mobile phone, I was not buying a phone. Why? Because it was lockdown period, my sources of income had dried up and, and I was very, very scared as to what will happen if I need to spend money on healthcare. So I became conservative, I did not buy mobile phone. I wanted to go for a vacation, I did not. I wanted to buy a, a car and a bike, I did not. I wanted to buy a house, I did not. Why? Because of inflation. Things were very, because of COVID, things were very uncertain, right? But as lockdown is, is slowly being removed, 
Now people who had suppressed their demands, now people are reviving their old demands and they are coming in the market to buy a lot of things all of a sudden, right? Supply takes time to increase, but when everybody in the economy is coming to buy a lot of goods and services, what will happen? Their prices are going up. Because, so see, this pent-up demand, because of pent-up demand means demand which was suppressed. Now that is coming in front and people are demanding a lot of mobile phone, laptop, houses, flats, you know, motorbikes and all these things because of which prices are going up. Price of energy, electricity, coal, all these things, it's going up. And these are, you know, things which are used as inputs in the factories. So cost push inflation is happening. Similarly, food prices are going up. Non-food prices means, for example, price of clothes, price of metal, price of things which are non-food, right? Mobile phone, laptop, etc. So their prices are going up. Input prices are going up. Raw material prices are going up. Because of COVID lockdown and supply related issues, input prices are going up. Similarly, supply constraints are there because of lockdown, because of, you know, routes not being open, because of restrictions in travel, etc., etc. So supply related issues are there. Hence, prices are increasing. Freight cost is increasing, which means if you want to transport your goods and services through road, railway, ship, you know, all these things, they have become costly because of which this cost push inflation is increased. So see, guys, these three factors. Input prices, supply constraint, freight, because of this cost push inflation is happening. Cost push. Right? So this is these are the reasons because of which you are seeing global inflation. Now let us look at look at a trend of, of global inflation. This will give us a good idea. See, if you look at the inflation in UK, Britain, look at this. This line is the UK inflation, right? This is UK inflation. See. From 2021, January 21 to December 21, we are tracing inflation. So it was very low and it started to increase, increase and it reached here. So see, this inflation that you see in UK is mainly because of increase in food prices. And this is the highest inflation in UK in last 30 years. So because of COVID, the inflation that you see in UK in December 2021, very recently, it was the highest in last 30 years. It's a record inflation. Now look at inflation in India. Look at this. So January 21st, it was very high. It started to come down and finally it is less than 6%. In India, you know, there is something called as monetary policy committee. This monetary policy committee does inflation targeting. And what does monetary policy committee say? This monetary policy committee comprises of Reserve Bank of India as well as some representatives from government of India. So they have said that the ideal inflation in India should be in, in the range of 4 plus minus 2 percent, right? Which means ideally in India, the inflation should be between 2 to 6 percent. This is the ideal scenario. This is called inflation targeting. Whenever inflation is in this range in India, we say that inflation is range bound. So, so you see that inflation in India was very high some time back. So around January 21, the inflation started to increase, it reached peak and finally it is range bound. It's less than 6% currently. This is India's story. Now let's come to USA. Look at the inflation in USA. It started, it started and it went above UK and finally the inflation that you see in USA, it's very high. It's here. It's above, you know, UK. So this inflation in USA is highest since 1982. Right. The inflation today that you see in UK is, is the highest inflation in the last 30 years. Similarly, the inflation that you see in USA is the highest inflation in, since 1982. Similarly, if you look at inflation in Brazil, look at, look at Brazil. Brazil is an economy which is almost like India. So there the inflation rate is 10.1%. And all these inflation figures that you are seeing, these are consumer price index, which means this is the price which consumers are facing. So consumers are in trouble, right? Because prices have increased a lot. By the way, did you notice something interesting here? Consumer price index in India was increasing after January 2021, 20, right? In the month of January, it started to increase. But then the consumer price index started to come down. And finally, the consumer price index in India is range bound, which means it is in the range of monetary policy committee targeting less than 6%. How? Why was 
कंज्यूमर प्राइस इंडेक्स इंक्रीजिंग सो फास्ट एंड फाइनली इट केम डाउन इट मीन्स गवर्नमेंट मस्ट हैव डन समथिंग इंटरेस्टिंग to control this inflation otherwise our consumer price inflation would not have been controlled and our inflation would have looked like brazil but we must have done something right so as to control this inflation i am not saying that whatever government does was perfect but yes we did a few things right and a few things are there which we have not addressed if we would have addressed those few things also our consumer price index would have been here here and not here we would have been able to control it much better had we done a few more things but whatever we did it actually helped but more is required all right so this is a generic story now let us talk in detail about indian inflation see this is what i was talking about look i have taken this from the economic survey this graph so look at the wholesale price index so guys this line is wholesale price index see it is increasing like this and this is your consumer price index it is now coming down so see consumer price index in 2018 3.4% wholesale price 4.3 then consumer price index started to increase why because look here so it started to increase and in 2020 it reached its peak right covid times since then it has been very high but finally it has started to come and it has become range bound right it's in the range of mon uh, monetary policy targeting this is what i was saying that the government of india must have done something right that our consumer price index is coming down we will see today if you look at wholesale price index see it was very low in 2020 which means in wholesale market there was no activity and you very well know guys that what is wholesale price index the price level in your wholesale market wholesale means a market where huge quantity of goods are bought and sold it's a big market so because of covid lockdown what will happen in the wholesale market nothing since nothing was happening here obviously the prices were very low but now the economy is opening up so wholesale market is becoming very active and see how prices have increased but i have a question now look carefully in this graph now let's let's look at this this year all right this is 2020 this is 2020 21 look at this time when wholesale price index and consumer price index were equal they are intersecting right so this is where they were equal my question to you would be that if wholesale price index and consumer price index are equal at this point don't you think that reserve bank of india and government of india would have put their best efforts to control both the inflation then why is it that we are able to control our consumer price index but we were unable to control wholesale price index that means that the reasons because of which consumer price index was increasing those reasons must be controllable reasons those reasons must be internal reasons of india that those reasons belong to india so we could control it but but the reasons because of which wholesale price index is increasing maybe the reason of increase is not internal to india maybe it's external because of which we are unable to control it isn't it this could be one of the ways of thinking so we will see what actually is the reason for wpi what actually is the reason of cpi but i gave you a hint right i'll give you an example so suppose guys the price of tomatoes potatoes onion rice wheat all these things are increasing fruits vegetables cereal everything is increasing because of that people like you and i consumers would face higher price because the price of cereals fruits and vegetable are increasing if government somehow is able to give us more fruits vegetable and cereals so inflation will come down consumer price index will come down but suppose the price of oil is increasing right the oil that we import from other countries suppose india is also importing a lot of metals like copper like uh, you know aluminium iron there are a lot of varieties of these metals that we import also suppose the price of those metals are increasing things that we import so obviously when price of those things are increasing which we are importing it's very difficult to control it so maybe because of that your wholesale price index is increasing if if inflation is happening only because of food we would have controlled it but since it is happening also because of factors which are external to india it's difficult to control it we will examine in today's lecture what are the reasons that wpi is increasing and cpi has been controlled but in in, in brief i have already given you a hint so now guys 
let's let's go back to basics and let us try to understand what is the meaning of consumer price index and wholesale price index because if you understand these concepts it would become very very easy to understand the trend of wholesale price index and consumer price index in india in last one one and a half years so see this is how this is how we will brush up our our basics so so guys look at this picture this picture i have taken from a wholesale mandi which means a place where you buy bulk goods right not 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 one or two units of goods but you buy things in bulk for example if you have to buy this bottle of water you have to buy truck full of this water bottle like 500 bottles 1000 bottle of this water where will you go you will go to this mandi what do you see in the picture you see onions right so so if you if you have to buy truck full of onions you will buy it from the wholesale mandi but if you have to buy 1 kg of onion if you you have to buy this one bottle of water where will you go you will go to retail price retail uh, you know retail outlets right so you will go to places like big bazaar etc etc right this is where you will buy small quantity of goods so so whenever we we want to find prices in the economy guys we must look at prices at two level first of all we should go to the market where things are sold in bulk like wholesale mandis but if you just look at the the market where things are sold in bulk you would never get an idea about what is the price level that a typical a normal consumer is facing in everyday life because in everyday life if we have to buy this one bottle of water we don't go to wholesale mandi right we go to places like big bazaars grocery stores near our house and we buy this bottle of water so for us for consumers this is very important to know what is the price of small unit of of goods and services sold in the economy like one water bottle two water bottle is very important for me to know what is the price because i am a consumer and i am facing prices which are retail prices right not wholesale prices but then we also need to know what is the price in the wholesale market because from wholesale market only goods are sold in the retail market where do you think the big bazaar people buy their products from they buy their product from wholesale market so this retail market people they buy their product from wholesale mandis only fine so there are two ways of looking at prices in the economy or inflation in the economy so guys suppose that all of us are going to wholesale mandi let me take you to wholesale mandi so in this wholesale mandi what did i tell you what will you buy you will buy things in huge quantities so what are the things that you will buy in wholesale market so so you will buy a lot of goods for example you can buy onion potatoes rice wheat you can buy metals right like aluminium copper iron you can buy laptop mobile phone so what is the common between these things these are all goods if you go to a wholesale mandi guys would you ever and 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 don't take me wrong ha huh? if you go to a wholesale mandi would you ever see that along with onions there are a lot of doctors sitting there chartered accountants professors and they are saying buy our services no you never find service providers and you never find that 20 30 doctors are sitting in the mandi and they are saying buy our services it doesn't happen so service providers like doctors engineers chartered accountants professors teachers and all these people you will never find in the wholesale mandi you will only find goods so if somebody will ask you that what is the inflation level in a wholesale mandi what will you do so so there is a way so let us go to a wholesale mandi and let us make a list of some of the most important goods or items that are being bought and sold in the wholesale mandi when you make that list for india currently you will see that there are close to 697 items which the government feels are the most important items bought and sold in a wholesale mandi 697 items right the government of india puts these 697 items in a basket and government of india finds the price of this basket in the year for example let's say the government of india finds the price of this basket in the year 2011 12 now the government of india tries to find the price of this basket of 697 goods in the current year current year meaning for example let's say 2021 22 right the year in which we are studying the economic survey so 2021 22 now in the year 2011 12 suppose the price of this 
697 items taken together the price of this basket was 100 rupees and suppose the price of this basket last year in 2011 is 105 rupees or or let me change it let me let me make it let me make it 112 rupees so so what is the increase in price between between 2011 and 2021 from 100 it became 112 right so what is what is the wholesale price index 12 percent this is how you find wholesale price index so you take 697 most important items here from the wholesale mandi and then you find their price in a base year base year means reference year what is your reference year here 2011-12 government of india takes 2011-12 as the reference year and then you take the price in the current year it's 112 rupees so the difference in price is your wholesale price index 12 percent so so now do you understand what that 12 or 13 percent inflation that you saw in the figure for example here so you see here the inflation is 12.5 percent wholesale price index right so this is how they are measuring inflation so if you measure this year's wholesale price compared to last year then last year becomes the base year if you measure this year's inflation with respect to 2011-12 2011-12 becomes the base year right so your reference year is called as the base year so this is your wholesale price index idea now i told you that if you go to wholesale mandi you take the most important 697 items so can you divide those 697 items into different categories yes so if you want to divide these 697 items there are three types of items in a wholesale market that are bought and sold all of them are goods mind you they are not services they are goods only so the first type of item that you will find in the wholesale mandi is called as primary articles right so what are primary articles they are very basic articles which you you typically use in the natural form for example food rice wheat cereal vegetable or or for example minerals or for example crude petroleum the raw petroleum right so those or, or, or these or, or natural gas these are the kind of things which are primary articles then you have fuel and power right electricity so that's your fuel and power or processed fuel here you are using raw fuel here processed fuel manufactured products manufactured products could be anything for example let's say ice cream ice cream is a manufactured product it's a processed food so milk is a primary product but ice cream is a manufactured product right so manufactured product could be ice cream which is food then non-food non-food could be clothes shoes mobile phone laptop right so so bike car all these things Plus, for example, steel, aluminium, iron, copper, uh, you know, all the oil seeds, right? Uh, so, so these things are called as manufactured products. So, there are three types of items that constitute this, this basket in the wholesale market. These three types of items are sold in the wholesale market. In the wholesale market, when you have taken 697 most important items, and then you are checking their prices and you are calling it as wholesale price index are all the items equally important no in a wholesale price index 697 items what is the weight weight means importance given to primary articles 22 percent so 22 percent of these are primary articles fuel and power 13 percent manufactured products 64 percent this is the importance of the articles here right so primary articles 22.6 fuel and power has a weight of 13 percent and manufactured products have a weight of 64 percent all right now <clears throat> let, let's come to let's come to the the wholesale price index and its details first so first let's cover the wholesale price index then we will go to consumer price index so guys if, if you look at the wholesale price index i told you there are 697 items that we take in india and we divide those 697 items into three categories first is primary articles second is fuel and power and third is manufactured products see it will become very easy for you now what is the importance given to primary articles 22 percent what is the importance given to fuel and power 13 percent what is the importance given to manufactured products 64 percent so you know what is the meaning of this the meaning of this is if the price of manufactured items increases in the economy you will see 
that the price wholesale price index will jump very very fast because i told you wholesale price index is the price of this basket of 694 items and in this basket which is the most important category manufactured product so if the price of manufactured product goes up immediately the price of this whole basket will jump right so it's very important to understand it so so now let us look at the details of wholesale price index basket so so this box that you see guys this bigger box this box is those that 697 items so in the primary article which means basic article which you consume in natural form what are the things that you will find food non food minerals crude and petroleum so so if let's look at the importance of food the weight of food or importance of food is approximately 15% so in this 697 items what is the importance of food 15% primary and then let's come to manufactured product i told you that there are things called as processed food they are also food but manufactured food what is the importance of manufactured food 9% approximately 9% so you have food here you have food here what is the total importance of food 15 plus 9 24 so what is the weight of food in wholesale price index 24% so in your 697 items one fourth importance is given to food so if the price of food goes up, if the price of food increases in the economy, see what will happen to wholesale price index. One fourth of your wholesale price index comprises of food. So if food prices goes up, wholesale price index will jump. Fine. Similarly, let's look at, let's look at the importance given to non-food. What is non-food? I gave you an example. Non-food would mean, for example, mobile phone, laptop, metal, copper, aluminium, iron ore, all these things, right? If their prices goes up, then wholesale price index will jump a lot because half of your wholesale price index is manufactured products, right? So if, if the price of metal, I'll give you an example. Suppose India buys a lot of metal from other countries like copper, aluminium and all those things. Suppose we are buying from other countries, we are importing and if their prices goes up, what will happen to wholesale price index? Wholesale price index will jump because look at the importance given to them. Huge, isn't it? Similarly, what is the importance given to fuel and power? The importance given to fuel and power is almost close to 13, 14%, right? So if there is an increase in the price of imported oil, what will happen to wholesale price index? Wholesale price index will jump very fast, isn't it? So this is how wholesale price index is. Now there is one more concept which I want to teach you before going ahead. This will, this will give you a good idea about what is happening in the economy because UPSC might ask you a question. Let us look at this, this example first and then I will talk about that conceptual thing. So, so what is this guys? So this is for example your home, right? So I am taking this example, that's your home. So who all are there in your home? That's your dad. That's your mom, that's you and your sister, right? So, so for example, there are four people in your family, four members in the family, your parents and you and your sibling, right? Siblings and parents, four people. You guys are the, are the core members of the family, right? You guys are the most important members of the family because your family comprises of four people. Who else is there in your family? So, so you have a cousin. He or she stays nearby. And your, your cousin keeps on coming to your place every day, five times, six times, just to meet you because you are in the same class, same school. So you keep on playing, spending time studying, right? So, so, so who are the people who come to your place regularly? Your cousin and your BFF, best friend forever, right? So, so your best friend also comes to your place a lot. So, so your cousin and best friend, they keep coming to your place, but they leave also because they have their own house, right? So they are called as guests. Can I say that guests are the non-core members, right? Guests are non-core members because they are volatile. Guests are not permanent. They are volatile. Now, if somebody asks you a question that who all are there in your family, who are your family members? So you will say parents your siblings, you, your cousin and your BFF, all of you together 
would be called roughly would be called as a family so if somebody says why are you calling these two as families you will say that they are like family isn't it but if somebody wants to wants to know the exact core members of the family your blood relatives as in your parents you and your sibling and if i ask you a question i'd no no don't give me the name of family members tell me the name of your blood relatives your own immediate family you will say okay in my family core members are just four these two are non core but together we constitute a family so guys this entire family that you see is called as wholesale price index and how many items are there 697 items are there right in these 697 items there are some core items those core items are the most important items and then there are some volatile items right so these are core items and these are volatile items so what are volatile items food fuel and power these are volatile items why is food and fuel and power volatile because the price of food rice wheat vegetable fruits it goes up and down based on many factors which are beyond our control for example monsoon for example seasonal pattern of of fruits and vegetable their climate change these are the things because of which the price of food goes up and down immediately today apples are 100 rupees a kg tomorrow it will become 150 rupees a kg lot of volatility is there in food prices similarly we cannot totally control the price of fuel because we import a lot of fuel from outside right so when india imports its fuel from outside whatever is the price of fuel at global level so whatever is the global price of of petroleum or or diesel or whatever it is the price at global level determines the price in india especially in case of fuel and power so these two are volatile these two would go up and down so if these two are going up and down would i say that indian economy is doing very bad no entire world is doing bad because these two are volatile and an entire world is using it so if we want to know what is the most stable or core part of inflation from the entire set of 697 items we have to remove food and fuel if you remove food and fuel whatever is left is called as core inflation so for example if there is increase in price of clothes if there is increase in price of mobile phone laptop and all these things it's a very dangerous thing because that means your core inflation is increasing and core things should be stable that there that inflation should not increase right so there are two kinds of things in this 697 items core and volatile things called as non core right so if you remove volatile things from wholesale price index whatever remains is called core so i'll show you here see so this is your wholesale price index this entire box is 697 items and from here you have to remove food right you have to remove food and you have to remove fuel and power if you remove your your food and fuel and power from your wholesale price index is called as wholesale price index core right and and also notice something that the general wholesale price index that we we have studied so far in last 10 minutes the general wholesale price index is also called as wholesale price index headline wpi headline what is headline wholesale price index this increase in price of all the 697 items taken together all the 697 items either it is generally called as wpi only or it is also called as wpi headline this increase in price of 697 items either it is called as wpi or it is also called as wpi headline so if somebody says headline wpi is increasing you should understand they are saying that the price of all the 697 items are increasing so from this headline if you remove food and fuel right then it is called as wpi core this wpi core an increase in wpi core is a very dangerous thing it should not happen right because it's not volatile it means your stable things are becoming disturbed in the economy fine so that's your uh, wpi now <clears throat> let's look at the trend in wpi then we will go to cpi so see as i was telling you that these are your components of wholesale price index now 
I told you that wholesale price index in India is increasing very fast. There must be a reason for that, isn't it? Let us examine the reason. So look, your food prices have increased so much in the economy that it has actually pushed your entire wholesale price index very high. So your wholesale price index in India has increased because the prices of vegetables have increased. See? So the prices of vegetable have increased to the extent of 30%. So earlier, if, if the vegetable prices were 100 rupees a kg, it became 130 rupees a kg. From 100, it became 130. And that is one of the reasons that your wholesale price index is increasing. Because I told you that wholesale price index is a basket of 697 items. In this 697 items, you have category, primary product, food and fuel, and manufactured products. So in primary category, your vegetable prices are increasing. So obviously, if this category is increasing, entire wholesale price index will increase. WPI will increase. Similarly, let's look at the price of minerals. The price of minerals have increased to the extent of 17 to 20 percent. If the price of minerals are increasing this much, obviously, your wholesale price index will increase. Because see, price of primary articles are increasing. This is primary article, minerals. Hence, your wholesale price index is increasing. There has been an increase in crude petroleum and natural gas, see, to the extent of 55%. So, earlier if the price of petroleum was $100 a barrel, now it is $155 a barrel. So, 55% increase because of that, wholesale price index has increased. And can you really control, control the global prices of, of, of crude petroleum, etc.? No. Since we are unable to control the global price of petroleum and all, that is one of the reasons that wholesale price of index is very high. Look at the jump in price of crude petroleum, right, 55%. Now let's look at the jump in the price of fuel and power, approximately 20%. So this is imported because the price of fuel and power are increasing. This is imported inflation. Why? Because we are importing fuel from outside. So if their prices are increasing, yes, isn't it? Then you have manufactured products. In manufactured products, see what is happening? In manufactured products, your, your basic metals, for example, aluminium, copper, iron ore, their prices are increasing, manufactured products. Hence, your WPI is increasing. See, manufactured products are, their price is increasing, so WPI is increasing. Similarly, price of edible oil is increasing. How much was the increase in the price of edible oil? 20%. So if the price increase in edible oil is 20%, you will see that manufactured pro product prices are increasing. Hence, wholesale price index is also increasing. All right. So <clears throat> now do you have an idea about why wholesale price index is increasing? Precisely because of these things. So guys, now let us go back and let us try to examine the basics related to consumer price index. So guys, uh, let us now discuss what is consumer price index. So see, let me ask you a very simple question. Whenever you go out for shopping, what do you buy? So, so you might be buying a lot of stuff for daily use. For example, you might be buying a mobile phone, a laptop. You might be buying clothes, right? You might be buying, for example, stationary items. You might be buying, buying a packet of chips. Uh, maybe a, 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 a bottle of cold drink, maybe a bottle of, you know, juice, etc., etc. Isn't it? All these things. So what are these things? These things are, are, are the items that we use in everyday life. What if government of India comes to you and asks you that, can you give me a list of, of those things which you buy the most, where you spend most of your money? So, so you will give a list. Similarly, your friend will give a list. I will give a list. So what will government of India do? Government of India will compile a list of all the important things where we spend money as consumers, right? Now, along with buying goods, for example, we buy textbook, newspaper, mobile phone, laptop. Along with this, sometimes, God forbid, but if we fall sick, we also use the, the services of a doctor. Sometimes we use the services of a chartered accountant, right? Lawyers, teachers for that matter. So, so we use you know, sort of services also. Along with goods, we use a lot of services in everyday life also. So, if I ask you this question again, that now can you tell me what are the most important things that you consume in everyday life? You would say, 
that you consume a lot of goods and you consume a lot of services. Now, if government of India makes a list of the most important goods and services consumed by an average Indian consumer, you know how the list would look like and how many items would be there in the list comprising of both goods and services. This will be that list. So, suppose the government of India takes a basket. In that basket, government of India puts the name of all the goods and services. Right, G plus S means goods and services that a typical normal consumer consumes in everyday life. So there are almost more than 400 items in this basket. Like in wholesale market, there were 697 items. In everyday life, if you, if you talk about the most important things, there are more than 400 items are there in this basket. Now, what is the nature of these 400 items? So, so you can divide these, these more than 400 items, 460, 470, 480. So you can divide these, these items that you consume in everyday life into following categories. See, look at it very carefully because, because this is very important from UPSC perspective. So if you, if you divide these items which you consume on everyday basis, you will see that we consume food and beverage right food food you already know and beverage means things that you drink so you you put food and beverage. for example this this bottle of water tea coffee all these things beverage so food and beverage and what is the importance of food and beverage for a for a consumer in everyday life 45.8% this is the importance that we give to food and beverage right so in this entire basket of things, goods and services that we consume, almost close to 45.8% is just food and beverage. Then, then pan, tobacco, etc, etc. These are also called as sin goods because these are not good things, but we consume it. What is the importance given to it? Close to 2%. Then we buy a lot of clothes and footwear. What is the importance? 6%, which means... The, if, if the price of pan, tobacco, clothes and footwear, they increase, then it won't affect us that much. It will affect us, but it won't affect us that much. But if the price of food and beverage increases, it will kill a normal consumer, right? It's a killer. But these two also affect the consumer, but the effect is less compared to food and beverage. Now, now look at housing. We also pay, pay house rent, isn't it? Home rent. So, so the importance of houses is 10% for a daily you know, transaction. So in daily life, we as consumers, we give the importance of housing, we give it the importance of 10%. Then we also buy a lot of fuel and light, right? Electricity, LPG cylinders, right? And, and, and kerosene. So all those fuel that we use for cooking plus electricity. It is mentioned in fuel and light. So what does fuel and light comprise of? It comprises of LPG, kerosene, electricity, etc. And these LPG and kerosene used for mostly cooking purposes. What is the importance given to it? 7%. Then you have miscellaneous. I told you along with goods, we also consume services. What kind of services? Health services, educational services, entertainment services and all these things are kept in miscellaneous. And what is the importance of services in our daily life? So importance of service is close to 28%. Do you see this? 28%. So if the price of service goes up, it will affect a normal consumer in day-to-day -day life a lot. Isn't it? I want you to notice something very, very important. Here if you notice, in fuel and light, we did not mention you know, uh, petroleum and diesel that we use in our vehicles. It is not mentioned here. See, you see only LPG and kerosene. So where do you find petroleum and diesel? You find it in miscellaneous category. See, miscellaneous category comprises of health, education services, etc., etc., entertainment services. It also comprises of petroleum and diesel prices because it's a part of transportation and communication. So transportation and communication is a category under miscellaneous, under transportation and, and uh, communication services, we put petroleum and diesel prices. This is what the government has done here. They have put petroleum and diesel prices here. So now I want to ask you a question. If the price of food and beverage goes up, do you think consumer price index, which means the price faced by a consumer in day to day life, this will go up? Yes, a lot. If the price of fuel goes up, will the consumer price index go up? Yes. If the price of miscellaneous item goes up, right? Petrol, diesel, 
health and education service if it goes up look at the importance 28 percent the price of cpi consumer price index will jump very fast similarly if food and beverage price goes up consumer price index will jump very fast so how do we measure consumer price index we put all these things more than 400 items in this basket we look at the price of this basket in a reference year or base year and what is the reference year for consumer price index the reference year for consumer price index in india currently is 2012 so we look at the price of 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 this basket in 2012 so so suppose the price of this basket in 2012 is 100 rupees then we look at the price of this basket again in 2021 for example Suppose the price of this basket in 2021 is 105 rupees. So what is consumer price index? What is the increase in the price of this basket? The increase in the price of this basket is rupees 5 or 5%. So this 5% is your consumer price index inflation. How would consumer price index increase? If there is increase in the price of any of these categories, consumer price index will increase. Your CPI will increase. Which of these items have the maximum impact on CPI? The items with more importance or more weight. For example, food and beverage have a very high weight. So if their price goes up, CPI will go up very fast. If the price of miscellaneous item goes very fast, which means services, petroleum and diesel, if their price goes up, consumer price index goes very fast. Right? This is how it goes like. Now, did you also notice something? If, if, I, if I want you to compare something very important, just, just notice it. In wholesale price index, what is the importance given to food, only food? I told you, primary articles, 15% food, and in the manufactured items, 9% food. So, so what is the importance given to food in WPI? Total 27% importance has been given to food. What is the importance given to food in consumer price index? See, beverage is not food. If you just, just find out what is the importance given to food. Food plus beverage, 45.8%. But importance given only to food is 39%. So, if the price of food goes up in the economy, which inflation will move faster? This inflation will move faster. Consumer price index will move very fast because the importance given to food in consumer price index is high, 39%. So if the price of food goes up, consumer price index will grow very, very fast. And the importance of food given in wholesale price index is 24%. It's not low, but it's low compared to here. So it's 24%. So if the price of food goes up, wholesale price index will also go up. Wholesale price index will also go up. But the increase in wholesale price index will be slightly less. But the increase in consumer price index is very, very fast. So I want to ask you a question that suppose in the economy, the price of food is increasing. Price of food is increasing. Which inflation will grow faster? So it's, it's very simple to see that the importance given to food in consumer price index is very high. So the consumer price index will grow like this. And the importance given to food in wholesale price index is also high, but wholesale price index will be below consumer price index. If we are only talking about food, because the importance given to food in consumer price index close to 39%, wholesale price index close to 24%. So are you getting an idea as to why wholesale price index is growing faster than consumer price index? One of the reasons. So, so when, when the price of food was increasing in the economy, your wholesale price index and consumer price index so 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 what happened was consumer price index was growing very faster wholesale price index was growing little slower the government of india controlled the price of food somehow i will teach you how they did it so they controlled it the moment you control it what will happen if you control the food prices and, and, and if the food prices start to come down this inflation started to come down so cpi came here and CPI reduced very, very fast. But your wholesale price index also reduced, but the reduction was slower. So your wholesale price index is here. It also started to reduce, but the reduction was slower. So CPI reduced faster, wholesale price index reduced slower. So wholesale price index became higher than CPI. All right. So, 
so that is one of the ways to look at the economy so this was your basics now let us get into the details of consumer price index all right guys so now i have already showed you how the consumer price index looks like so it will be very easy for you to understand see so this entire box that you see is your consumer price index right and i told you there are more than 400 items in the basket of consumer price index so so how many items are there we have already discussed it food and beverage pan tobacco intoxicant clothing housing fuel and light and i have told you what is there in fuel and light so kerosene is there right lpg is there and and electricity is there what is there in miscellaneous services like education health recreation transport and communication and i told you that in transport and communication you have petroleum and diesel so so this food and beverage has an importance of 45% food and beverage if you take beverage out what is the importance given to to just food the importance given to food is 39% see this one is consumer food so the importance given to food is 39 which means 6% is the importance given to beverage and 39% is the importance given to food so so similarly if you look at all these things you will get an idea that pan and tobacco 2% then 6 10 6 28 something like this right this is called as consumer price index combined which means for all india level this is your consumer price index similarly we also calculate consumer price index for rural areas only because the way rural people consume things is different for example in rural areas you will hardly find anybody paying house rent because normally people have their own houses even if the house is small it's there so in rural area housing is not a headache there so house rents are not a big headache so house rents have been removed from rural area so for urban area house rent is important right so we calculate consumer price index for rural area it's different for urban area it's different and for entire india a common consumer price index it is this one right so whenever somebody says consumer price index so they are actually meaning consumer price index combined it is also called all india consumer price index if i say consumer price index rural that means i am talking about rural areas only so whenever somebody says consumer price index for rural areas it means what is the price faced by people in rural areas consumer price index urban means what is the price level faced by people in urban areas and since the consumption pattern is different in rural and urban area hence we calculate different consumer price index for rural area different for urban india all right now so so please come here and see i want to explain something to you so guys this consumer price index that i that i told you this consumer price index combined this one this one has a lot of names so see this consumer price index is also called as consumer price index headline this one it is also called as consumer price index all india it is also called as consumer price index combined there are so many names it's called as consumer price index headline it's also called as all india consumer price index and it is also called as consumer price index combined fine so now let me let me explain this interesting thing to you so suppose guys this is your home <laughs> who are the people who are there in your home so that's your parents right so so these two are parents that's you and your sibling brother and sister all right so siblings you guys are the core members of the family right now i told you some time back that your cousin and your best friend they keep coming to your place so they are like guests right so so what you do is from your home so your home comprises of core plus non core isn't it this is core and these these guests are also called as non core these non core people are very volatile because sometimes they would come sometimes they would leave right isn't it so similarly if you look at this entire basket of more than 400 items 
more than 400 goods and services this entire basket is called as consumer price index headline all right these these all the 400 items more than 400 items this entire basket is called as headline consumer price index from this headline consumer price index if you if you remove you know so so for example from this headline consumer price index if you remove food and fuel right so so for example from your house if you remove your cousin and your best friend so remove them from your house so if you remove food and fuel from this basket so whatever you get is called as consumer price index core because you are removing the volatile things and when you remove the volatile things whatever is left is the core thing so from your house if you remove your guests what is left that's you it's the core thing so similarly in an economy guys in an economy the government looks at the change in price of food pan tobacco clothes house then then miscellaneous item etc every price is looked by the government but the government is more concerned with core inflation because if your basics of the economy things which are core if their prices goes up then it's very disturbing for example if the price of food goes up or fuel goes up the government knows that it might be a short term issue it might be solved very fast but if the price of of clothes housing and everything goes up in the economy it's very dangerous so every government calculates cpi combined and from cpi combined they remove the volatile items like food and they remove fuel then what they get is called cpi core so see so so let me show you how it looks like so so this is your item number 1 2 3 4 5 6 all the six taken together is called as cpi headline right 1 2 3 4 5 6 it is also called cpi all india or it is also in general called as cpi combined cpi headline or cpi all india from 1 2 3 4 5 6 if you remove this food and if you remove fuel so if you remove one and if you remove five few elements from one and then five if you remove it what is left two three four six this is called as cpi core or right, a core inflation but then somebody told government of india that you have removed food and you have removed fuel and you are calling it as core but then at your house you also have somebody called as a gardener this gardener comes to your house at 9 am in the morning and leaves at 6 6 pm or or 5 pm so this person is also not permanent in your family he comes and leaves so if you remove these two and you are saying that i have removed the guests hence whosoever is left is the core family member it's wrong because you also have to remove your gardener if you want to call your family as core you have to remove your gardener as well this gardener is nothing but price of petrol and diesel and 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 where is it given so the price of petrol and diesel i told you the government has made the table in such a way that the price of petrol and diesel is here so from your consumer price index this entire table if you just remove food and fuel you get something called as cpi core but this cpi core has something very dangerous which is number 6 that's your dangerous thing why because petrol and diesel is there how can you call it core so the government of india and the economic survey has given one more concept called as cpi refined core what is cpi refined core so from cpi core you have to remove number 6 which is petrol and diesel you have to just remove petrol and diesel the moment you remove petrol and diesel see transport and and communication which means price of petrol and diesel you have to remove from cpi core it will become cpi refined core right so what is cpi refined core 
CPI refined core means from this entire table, all right guys, so, so from this entire table, what you have to do is, let me show you what is CPI refined core. So from this entire table, all these things, you have to remove food, fuel, and you have to remove petrol and diesel. So what is left? You, you have this left, this left, this, this, sorry. So, and, and rest of the things are left like health, education and all. These things would be called as refined core. All right. So now let us see why CPI inflation in India increased. So guys, see, uh, now we are going to understand why consumer price index in India increased through this table. It becomes very easy now. See, look at this description. I told you that consumer price index in India comprises of all these items. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 6. Now let us examine what is the contribution of each one of these in increasing India's consumer price index. This will give us a good idea of why consumer price index is increasing. So, the contribution of food and beverage in India's consumer price index is almost 32%. Earlier, it was close to 60%. But government has been able to control the food prices through public distribution system, National Food Security Act. We have been able to control the food prices by increasing the supply of food. Hence, the contribution of food in, in consumer price index has come down from 60% to 32%. So if my consumer price index is this much, most of the consumer price index that you see, most of the increase in price that you see in the economy is because of food and beverage. 32% is the contribution of food and beverage in the increasing prices at consumer level. What is the contribution of fuel and light? In, in increasing the prices in the economy. So the contribution of fuel and light in increasing the CPI, consumer price index, is close to 27%. So, so fuel and light are one of the reasons because of which consumer price index is increasing. Which means if consumers are buying LPG and kerosene, and if we have to pay more price for it, higher price for it, of course consumer price index is increasing. And you very well know that the government of India is not giving direct subsidy to LPG since May 2020. Since May 2020, Government of India is not giving direct subsidy to LPG and in kerosene also, the central government does not give the subsidy. If state governments want to give the subsidy, they can. Central government is not giving subsidy on kerosene also. In LPG, the Government of India is giving subsidy only to selected individuals who are in far-flung areas, etc., etc. But normally, the government is not giving subsidy on LPG these days since May 2020. So if government is not giving subsidy on LPG and kerosene, which means LPG and kerosene prices are high, because of that, fuel and light, their contribution in, in increasing consumer price index is 27%. What is the contribution of, of this miscellaneous item? Services like education, health, transport, communication, is petrol, diesel, etc. Their contribution is 35%. So the consumer price index in India is increasing because of food and beverage, fuel and light, and because of miscellaneous. These three are contributing a lot in the consumer price index. What is the contribution of, of pan, tobacco, clothes and houses? Hardly close to 6%. 94% rise in price in India is because of food, because of fuel and light and miscellaneous. And, and if somebody asks you that, which factor contributes the maximum to, to inflation in India, you should say miscellaneous items, currently miscellaneous items, followed by food and beverage, right? followed by fuel and light. This is what you should understand. I told you that why fuel and light have become so costly because government is not giving any subsidy on this. They are giving subsidy in exceptional cases, but in general, government is not giving subsidy here. Similarly, why do you see an increase, increased contribution of miscellaneous? Why, is, why are miscellaneous items contributing 35% to inflation? So see, look carefully. 
if if you look carefully at the price of petrol and diesel and i told you petrol and diesel are a part of miscellaneous group right if you look at the price of petrol and diesel why is it high look at the global prices of petroleum and diesel since april 2020 look at it carefully since april 2020 this is oil price global oil price since april 2020 the global oil prices have increased like this because of it the price of petroleum and diesel in india has increased and second reason is because central government and state government they impose very high you know taxes and duties vat etc on petroleum and diesel because so so their taxes are very high global prices are high hence petrol and diesel are costly and since petrol and diesel are costly look at the contribution of petrol and diesel approximately 35% in your cpi all right so in this miscellaneous category who is contributing very high high amount to consumer price index petrol and diesel that is the reason that we have not been able to control wpi we can control food prices of course but to control prices related to to this category and this category is slightly difficult fine so so this this brings us to this part look at this one so so what is this this talks about as i told you that we will also discuss reasons for difference in rural and urban inflation right so consumer price index i told you there is a consumer price index which is for rural area and consumer price index for urban area right so let's see why why is there a difference in consumer price index of rural and urban area look at this please so this dark line is the consumer price index in urban areas and this line is the consumer price index in rural area and i told you that consumer price index in india is increasing mainly because of food and beverage fuel and miscellaneous so economic survey says that when this research was done that why urban and rural india inflation is different between april 2018 and december 2019 and why consumer price index in rural and urban area are different in november 20 March 2021 and September 2021 why is there a difference in consumer price index in rural and urban area so they are saying the main reason for difference in consumer price index in rural and urban area in india the the prominent reason is food inflation because of food inflation we see that the impact of food inflation or or the increase in food prices at urban level at in urban areas was higher so the increase in food prices in urban areas was much higher in this period hence urban inflation is higher than rural inflation similarly here also the increase in food prices in urban areas was much higher so urban inflation is higher than rural all right so please remember it for upsc so guys now we are going to look at the analysis of of drivers of cpi inflation so just like we did the drivers of wholesale price index like why wholesale price index increased in india you remember metal prices etc etc so similarly we are going to examine what are the main important reasons because of which consumer price index has increased in india so see guys i have created a chart for you so so see at at some point of time our consumer price index was more than 8% around 2020 in 2020 in the year 2020 our consumer price index touched even 8.5% then it came down to almost 2.9% at some point in the year 2021 it came down right what is the reason why was it very high here and why did it come down this can be asked in upsc so see i have created a chart for you now one of the main reasons for the increase in consumer price index i told you was was food fuel and light and petroleum and uh, diesel but petroleum and diesel are mostly the prices that are controlled globally we can't do much there yes we can but but there is also an impact of global prices there but what about food so so let us examine why food inflation has started to play such a big role in indian economy so let's look at cereal prices the cereal prices increased like like rice wheat etc it increased 
mainly because of covid related supply side problems when there is covid there is restriction there is lockdown so supply becomes little difficult whenever there is less supply people will demand more cereals and the prices will go up you know there is a universal rule whenever there is a scarcity of something its price goes up and during covid restriction and lockdown the supply of rice wheat etc was low hence its price was high that is one of the reasons see second reason that that you see in the economy is is second reason for for consumer price index is tomatoes see what happened during the cultivation of tomatoes india faced untimely rains right so so untimely rains happened in punjab himachal tamil nadu because of which tomato crop was badly impacted so the the production and supply of tomatoes came down its prices went up then there is one more factor called as seasonality what is seasonality i'll give you an example so if you look at july to november the production of tomatoes is slightly lower if you look before july let me give you an example so for example let's say that the cultivation of tomato is very good in the month of april and may the cultivation of tomato is good but if you look at the cultivation of tomatoes in july to november it's not good because of agricultural cycle so so suppose that cultivation of tomato is very good in this month but not good here so when the cultivation of tomatoes is not very good in july to november what will happen its price will go up but but in the month of april and may since the cultivation of tomatoes is good the supply of tomatoes is good its price is down this is called seasonality so in the season when production is more prices are less in the season when production is less the prices are more so we found that two things happened one untimely rain happened and second so the season when tomatoes are not being grown so the prices went up what happened in case of onions and potatoes in onions and potatoes because of seasonality the prices went up you recently saw the price of potatoes and onions went up why because of seasonality because we are not in that season of potatoes and onions similarly in case of meat and fish the prices increased because of supply side disruption because of lockdown the supply was not smooth and number 2 the feed cost increased what is feed the the food that you give to animals that's feed so the price of feed increased because of covid hence meat and fish became costly let's look at oil and fat very very important so you see India imports look at this one India imports close to 60% of its edible oil and palm oil from outside so we depend on other countries to the extent of 60% for our edible oil and palm oil 60% of our our demand of edible oil and palm oil is imported at global level because of covid the price of edible oil and palm oil increased so if at global level prices have increased and you import it of course in india also the price of edible oil and palm oil will increase this is nothing but this is called as imported inflation right so imported inflation is one of the reasons as well look at the pulses so in pulses you see that there has been supply side problems because of covid lockdown and restrictions and also when the covid lockdown was announced you know what people like you and i did we started to stock a lot of pulses because we know that pulses become very costly in the economy so everybody in india started to buy a lot of pulses and store it in the house it's a dry product so we can store it so when you hold pulses its price in the market went up these are the things that happened now i want to ask you a question so so if you are the government of india you very well know that during the month of april and may the cultivation of let's say tomatoes onion and potatoes is good so when the cultivation is good the prices will be low and you very well know that during the month of july to november the cultivation of let's say tomatoes onion and potatoes is not good right so when the cultivation is not good because of agricultural cycle the price of onion tomato and potatoes will increase if you are the government of india what should you do so that the price of tomatoes onion and potatoes are controlled if you are the government of india what you should do is when the cultivation of tomatoes onion and potatoes are good at that time you should create very nice storage facilities 
and you should store tomato, onion and potatoes because you are producing extra tomatoes, onion and potatoes and then you should supply it during this lean season when tomatoes, onion and potatoes are not available. This will take care of the problem called as seasonality. So your storage means warehouses, like warehouses, cold storage, these things should be good in India. So these steps must be taken by government of India. It is at these things that the government has not done a lot of work. Government needs to provide more warehouses and cold storage facilities. That's number one. Similarly, guys, suppose you are the producer of or you are the you are a farmer who is cultivating pulses in India. All of a sudden, because of COVID, you saw that the households have demanded a lot of pulses. They are holding it also and the pulse price has increased. Now, <clears throat> what did the government of India do? Government of India started to import pulses, oil, etc., etc. So if you are the cultivator of pulses, how would you feel if you see that when the prices are growing, all of a sudden government of India is importing pulses from outside. You feel threatened, you feel so uncertain. In the next season, you will not grow pulses. So what should the government do? Rather than randomly importing things, government should have an import policy so that we should prepare for these bad times in advance and we should not give these kind of negativities on the producers of pulses in India, right? That is one thing. Next, you, you see guys, there are some areas of India and you would appreciate this point. For example, let me take you to east and northeast of India. If you go to east and northeast of India, these areas are very good in fruits and vegetables. So, so if we can find a formula or a method using which if you go to surplus areas, take the fruits and vegetables from here, put it in cold storage, process them and then distribute it in different areas of India where there is shortage. So from surplus area, you should distribute fruits and vegetables to areas where there is shortage. If you can do that, then there will be availability of fruits, vegetables, cereals across India and prices will be controlled. These are the things that the government of India should do. So let's see if government of India has, has taken such steps or not. Let's examine. So see guys, we are going to discuss some of the steps to control inflation. These steps are also called as supply side measures to control inflation because we are trying to smooth out the supply factors. All right. So what are the supply side uh, you know, steps to control inflation? We can divide supply side measures to control inflation in three categories. And guys, this question can be asked in UPSC. So, so what are the first set of steps that you can take from supply side to control inflation? It is changing the production pattern. Second set of supply side methods is import policy. And third is storage and transportation. So in terms of changing production pattern, this is very interesting, you know, since green revolution, what is the crop that the farmers are producing a lot? Wheat and rice. Indian farmers have been producing a lot of wheat and rice. Why? Because government gives them very high minimum support prices for wheat and rice. When you offer very high minimum support price for wheat and rice, all the farmers would want to cultivate it. Nobody wants to cultivate other crops. So what we should do is we should promote the farmers by giving them high minimum support prices. We should promote the farmers by motivating them to bring more area under cultivation. And we should also give them very high quality seeds for other crops like pulses, like oil seeds. Because if you motivate the farmers to produce more pulses and oil seeds, our dependence on other countries will come down. These are the things that the government of India should do. This is missing in India. We should increase area under cultivation of pulses and wild seeds. We should increase the minimum support prices of pulses and wild seeds. And we should give them high quality seeds for pulses and wild seeds. This will increase the production and control inflation. Here I told you in import policy, if you randomly start to import oil seeds and pulses, you know, your domestic producers are threatened. So government should create a smooth import policy, which they have. So what has the government of India done? Government of India has signed Memorandum of Understanding, MOU, with some countries like Myanmar, Malawi, Mozambique for the import of pulses and wild seeds. Right? This is what we have done. For next five years, we have signed an agreement with them. So if there is any shortage in India, they will supply those things for sure. And look at the last thing 
here storage and transportation i have already told you that suppose there is surplus food grain available in this area southern part of the country you must give some kind of facilities to the farmers so that the farmers can store these surplus food items and then they should be able to transport it store and transport it to deficit areas suppose the north of india does not have those crops but south of india has so the government of india must create a mechanism or a formula through which those surplus items from south can be taken to north and for that you need to give storage facility and transport facility to farmers so for example government of india is running kisan rail in the kisan rail government of india is transporting fruits vegetable meat product poultry dairy all these perishable things through train network right so it's a good step there are cold storage vans in this train so which keeps the life of the product you know at a at a good level similarly in india we we have a scheme called as operation green you know what government of india does under operation green so under operation green if there is a farmer and this farmer is producing let's say for example tomatoes right surplus tomato suppose this farmer is producing surplus tomatoes in karnataka so there is surplus tomato in karnataka so the government of india would tell this farmer that mr farmer you can store your crops and you can transport your crops so store it in cold storage and then transport it to to let's say jammu and kashmir or up so from karnataka you have to transport it to up so government of india is giving 50% subsidy to the farmers in storage and transportation of tomatoes from karnataka to up and jammu and kashmir under operation green so that the farmer can get good prices in these states fine so these are some of the supply side measures that uh, that we can take for example these things need to be taken and we are already doing these things in india so these supply side measures can control inflation so guys now let us understand a very very important thing from upsc perspective and also to understand the indian economy in a detailed manner let's see why there is a divergence between consumer price index and wholesale price index what is wholesale price index wholesale price index gives you an idea about what is the price level in mondi's wholesale market right consumer price index gives you an idea about what is the price level at retail level for for a normal consumer in everyday life why there is a difference you already have a very good idea about it but but let us collect all the information at one place and let us examine so for example let's see this is your graph so look at this bold line this bold line is your consumer price index and and on on december let's say December twenty one. All right, so December twenty one. What is the consumer price index that you see? It's five point two percent. It is range bound, right? So December twenty twenty one, it's five point two percent. And what is the wholesale price index that you see? Twelve point five percent, right? Very very high. Now let us look at the path of of increase of wholesale price index and consumer price index. so so let's say that we take the cut off year to be may 2019 month of may 2019 it is pre covid so pre covid your consumer price index and wholesale price index this dotted line is your wholesale price index they were same but after may the consumer price index started to increase a lot why because slowly covid happened etc so so in 2020 for example consumer price index started to increase it started to increase 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 but then you see something very interesting that we have been able to control it to 5.2 so it it at a point of time it became 6.2% also but we were able to bring it down and control it at 5.2 right i told you how so for example the food supply was increased by government of india right and and government of india also started to import a lot of food related items so so for example pulses oil seeds these things we started to impose another step taken by government of india was that the central government plus the state government they started to reduce the taxes imposed on petroleum and diesel 
those taxes also started to be reduced. So we were able to control consumer price index. And mind you that the importance of food in consumer price index is 39%. So when your price of food was increasing very fast, consumer price index was increasing very fast, but we were able to control the price of food through better supply and distribution. Since food prices are very important element of consumer price index, if you control food price index, if you control food prices, your consumer price index is controlled. So it got controlled. But what happened in wholesale price index? This is the time of COVID, you see. During COVID, what happened? Economy became standstill. Wholesale market was not doing anything. In the wholesale market, the prices became very low, see. But then as the economy started to open up, when the COVID restrictions started to become normal, look at the dotted line. Wholesale price index started to increase. And I told you that wholesale price index started to increase mainly because of food plus metal, aluminium, copper, etc., and also because of fuel and power. Now, metal, fuel and power are mostly imported inflation. We can't control it much because we are importing it. Hence, they, and, and you don't see metal in consumer price index because metal is an intermediate item. You use metal not for, for daily use, but you use metal for something else. So metal is a part of, very important part of wholesale price index, but metal is not a very important part of consumer price index. So when metal prices started to increase, of course your WPI will increase, wholesale price index will increase. Food contributes 24% to wholesale price index. What is the importance of food in wholesale price index? 24%. So when food prices are controlled, and, and food contribute almost 39% to consumer price index. So 39% is the importance of food here. So when the government controlled the food prices, the consumer price index became down. It reduced. But the wholesale price index reduction was less. Wholesale price index also reduced when the government controlled the food prices. But the reduction in consumer price index was very fast because food has a higher weight in consumer price index and food has a lower weight here. So your wholesale price index kept on increasing because consumer price index was controlled by the government but wholesale price index could not be controlled that much because the contributing factor in wholesale price index is mostly global factors. So see your, your consumer price index was increasing because of food inflation, petrol and diesel both have been you know somehow government has been able to manage it. But your wholesale price index is increasing because manufactured items are becoming costly, global oil prices are increasing, copper, aluminium, these things are increasing. And when the government controlled food prices, consumer price index came fast, you know, but wholesale price index came down, but the pace was less. So it is still very high. There is a gap. Fine. So this is your... This is your divergence between consumer price index and wholesale price index. Now guys, we are going to look into two miscellaneous things. So first is housing prices and second is pharmaceutical prices. So let's look at housing prices. Let, let's look at this time, 2020 to 2021. This is your COVID time, right? So what happened during COVID? The construction, house construction reduced because there was lockdown, there was restriction, the reverse migration also happened. So your construction activities came down. Launch of new projects got delayed. Why? Because economy was suffering from lockdown, health crisis. Nobody was launching new projects. Plus there was problem of fund also. Workers were not there. Right. So launch of new projects got delayed and buyers also delayed their purchase. So if I have to buy a house, during COVID, I know that my income, my job is, is under threat. So would I spend a lot of money in buying houses? No. So buyers delayed their purchase also. So all these things were negative. Now when you come to post-COVID phase, which is 2021 onwards, what happened in the post-COVID phase? Bent up demand increase. I'll give you an example. So suppose in the year 2020, uh, during COVID, I wanted to buy a house, but I could not. Why? Because there was job insecurity. Plus, I was putting some money in the bank, maybe because I would have required it for health, for treatment, etc., etc. So, people became conservative. 
But the moment lockdown is over, currently, in last two, three months, so because the restrictions are less and I feel that COVID is under control, etc. Now, I wanted to buy a house earlier, which I did not. Now, I will buy a house. So, if there are so many people like me who come in the market and they are demanding for house, what will happen? The price of houses go up. So, pent-up demand is increasing now. Because people who had suppressed their demand, now they are demanding in the market. Construction has also increased. Why? Because lockdown is, has been removed, so construction of houses have increased. Both demand is increasing, supply is increasing. In fact, not only this, but government of India has also taken some steps to promote housing. How? So the government of India has reduced stamp duties. When you buy a house, you have to pay some taxes to the government. Government of India has reduced it. And if you go to bank these days, guys, banks are giving very good interest rate on home loans. So, for example, let's say earlier, the, the interest on home loans used to be 6.9%. They are making some offers and they are also giving you home loan for 6.25% these days. So, the government has also reduced the interest rate on home loans. These are the things that you observe, right? Now, how would you measure? So, for example, if you have to measure the inflation in wholesale market, which index do you use? Wholesale price index. If you will have to measure inflation at, at retail level, right, for consumers, which measure of inflation would you use? Consumer price index. Similarly, if you have to measure inflation in the housing market, which index will you use? Which formula will you use? How do you know what is the price level of, of housing sector in the Indian economy? So we use an index called as National Housing Bank, NHB, Residex, HPI, Assessment Price Index. We use this. So we use this index to find out what is the price of houses. What were the house prices in the year 2017-18? This is the base year. So we find what is the price of houses in the year 2017-18. Then we find out what is the price of houses this year, current year. Whatever is the difference, we call it as housing inflation. Fine. So base year means reference year. So using this index, National Housing Bank, NHB Residex, this is the name of the index. We find out what is the price of houses in the year 2017-18, base year. Then we find out what is the price of the houses this year. The difference is called as inflation. Fine. And, and, and how do you create this index? So to create this index, the housing prices in 50 different cities of India, they are found out. So we do a survey in 50 different cities of India. We find the house prices. And then we check what is the increase in house prices compared to the year 2017-18. And this exercise of finding housing prices in India and, and, and creating this index, it is done on quarterly basis. Every quarter you will get this result that what is the inflation in housing prices. Have the housing prices increased in India? We do it quarterly. Now guys, let us look at some of the findings right? So, so that the economic survey has presented related to this index. They have found something very interesting. And I feel that this is something which can be asked in UPSC in prelims. You see, I have tried to create a building. This is an apartment, right? This is a house, apartment, and there are flats. This is a floor. So, so for example, ground floor, first floor, second floor, third floor, something like this, right? Now, who are these? These are buyers. What do buyers have? Buyers have cash. So buyers have cash, see, and these are, he is a seller, he is the owner of this building, he is trying to sell. So, so if this buyer comes and pays money to the seller, we say that first transaction has happened, there is a transaction, which means there is a deal. Similarly, if this buyer comes and buys a house, he pays the money, we say transaction 2 has happened, second deal has happened. Similarly. This buyer can come, we will call it a deal. This buyer can come, we will call it a deal 4. These are all transaction. Transaction 1, 2, 3, 4 to buy the house. During COVID, what we observed was that because of COVID, the number of transactions became less. The number of transactions, guys, which means number of deals were impacted a lot. So, huge impact on the number of deals. Which means earlier, if one cust earlier if if four customers were coming before COVID to buy a house, now only two customers are coming, right? So number of people who were coming, number of transactions, right? It reduced. 
so the covid has a huge impact of on number of transactions and deals now suppose the price of of this flat is 50 lakh rupees before covid <laughs> during covid it was 49 lakh rupees only in fact in some cases 50 lakhs only so the impact of covid on housing prices was less but the impact of covid on the number of transactions and deals was huge which means because of covid yes the housing prices the price of properties came down a bit but the impact on on number of transactions was much more higher much more dominant compared to the impact on prices prices were impacted but less impacted number of transactions were impacted the most that is a finding from economic survey so see housing transactions are more sensitive to covid crisis compared to housing prices remember this this can be asked in upsc and and what do we see that housing transactions reduced more in covid 1 with respect to covid 2 so there were different phases of covid right phase 1 phase 2 so in phase 1 the impact on transaction was huge in phase 2 the impact of transaction impact on transaction was little less so if i ask you a question that covid related crisis impacts the the transaction more or impacts the prices more it impacts the transaction more and the prices less right you should remember this for upsc now guys we come to the final part of of this uh, particular chapter of economic survey it says pharmaceutical prices so let me give you a brief idea about pharmaceutical prices and before that let me ask you a question don't you feel that if you are a policy maker or you are the government of india during especially covid crisis etc won't you won't you feel like having a policy so that medicine and medical equipments like thermometer you know like oximeter these things should not be very costly and it should be affordable by everybody right people should be able to afford it yes this is what our policy makers did so let's see you have ministry of chemical and fertilizer inside this ministry of chemical and fertilizer you have department of pharmaceuticals right you should remember this in this department of pharmaceutical you have an attached office the name of this office is national pharmaceutical pricing authority nppa right so ministry of chemical and fertilizer department of pharmaceutical and attached office called as national pharmaceutical pricing authority what do they do they regulate price of drugs to ensure access and availability it is their job to regulate the price of medicines etc so that medicines become affordable by people especially during health crisis so what did the government of india do steps taken to to make the medicines affordable the government of india put a price ceiling means the government of india put a limit on the price that you cannot increase price beyond a certain level so price ceiling has been put for almost 400 medicines and many more compositions also so 400 medicines fixed under list of essential medicines so those medicines which are very very essential for a normal public their prices have been fixed by government of india that nobody can sell it for more than that prices have also been fixed for 42 anti cancer medicines and remdesivir right this remdesivir was used a lot during covid so the government of india has fixed prices for that now price ceiling has also been fixed for stunts these these stunts are used during you know heart surgery cardio knee implants for knee surgeries oxygen concentrators oximeters glucometers bp monitor and nebulizer these nebulizers oxygen concentrator oximeter all these things are used during covid so the government of india has also put a price ceiling on these things right now one of the criticisms that is there uh, you know for the government of india is that though you have put a price ceiling but if you go to market there is black marketing of oxygen cylinders oxygen concentrators and then there is black marketing of remdesivir so the government of india must take some measures to stop the black marketing because on one hand you have fixed the prices but if you don't take steps to control black marketing of these things if you don't increase the supply of these medicines and these equipments then what is the purpose of putting a price ceiling because ultimately if somebody is paying 1 lakh rupees for oxygen cylinder what is the purpose of putting a price ceiling so governance becomes a very very important issue along with economic policies
all right so guys hope that you were able to understand the basics of inflation and why inflation has happened in india in last one one and a half years and and how to control inflation in a big economy like india see you soon with the next part in the series of economic survey analysis thank you so much